Hi everybody, I'm live and oops, we get to see the questions. So I'm gonna be answering questions um, and tap a response to show it on the screen and share with your viewers. Okay, here's a good one. Where do you hang feng shui crystals? And how do you decide which room, window, etc.? So the feng shui crystals I'll show you that we're referring to are these. These are 50 millimeter. These used to be like 50 or $60 each, and now you can get them on Amazon for like way, way less, like a box of 15 of them. And I have this available on my website. So I hang these in the window where there is direct light, they capture the light and send dancing prisms around the room. So I, at any given time in a large window, um, can have five of these. Now I have two, I have to rehang three of them. To wash them, I dip them in water and just give them a wipe. And then I also hang a crystal like this it slows down energy in feng shui. So if you have, let's say, a front door and it leads very closely thereafter to a back door and the energy of is just gonna come in the door and go straight back out, then a crystal slows the energy. It also prevents um, energy from moving too quickly down a stairwell. If your door is within three feet of the bottom of your stairs, your energy could be just draining right out of the house. The energy of all the areas of the Bagua, love, wealth, helpful people and travel, children and creativity out the door. So what I did is I took a big crystal and I hung it on the way down midway in my stairway so it slows down the energy. And the other thing this crystal does is if you have a hallway and there's a lot of doors, a bathroom door, a closet door, a bedroom door, all within one small vicinity, it portends arguments amongst the adults in the house. So when you hang a crystal from the ceiling, I like to hang it by fishing line, the traditional um, um, feng shui cure is to hang it by red string in increments of nine. So you could do red string or you could just do fishing line and you hang that in the middle of where all the doors are and it calms the energy. So that was that one. Um, that was the feng shui. Okay, here's a good one. What if your north node is the same as your sun sign? For those of you who don't know, and I imagine you do already because I've been north node obsessed, the north node is your spiritual shining star. It's who you came to be in this lifetime, and it's a sign, it's a zodiac sign. So for example, my north node is in Taurus, and I need to reach and stretch, be Venusian, always do Venusian things, be in nature, provide for myself, because the south node, which is always 180 degrees opposite, is where we've been in many past lifetimes. We've done it so much that we turn out to be, it turns out to turn into the negative expression of that sign. So mine is in Scorpio. And if my sun sign were Taurus, then I'd be supported. If my sun sign were Scorpio, then it would be an extra push and a reach to reach harder for the North Node, and it would be like a dance between the two. So if your North Node is the same as your sun sign, you are supported. If it's the same as your moon sign, you are supported. Um, and the other is called an opposition. If it's opposite, then you're gonna have like, hmm, I'm gonna have to do a dance. I'm gonna have to reach harder. So thank you for saying I look younger every day. That's so nice. I am so well rested. I slept in today and I did yoga for the first time. I'm not kidding. And I think five years yesterday and it just like knocked my socks off. Like. I can't even believe I used to do yoga like five times a week. So I'm back, I'm going to the gym, I'm doing yoga and it feels so good. So thank you for that. Um, your boyfriend is Torian North Node. So he and I are souls that we're in a soul pod. So what else? Let's do another one. Just like the other one. Can I talk about Libra North Node and career? I'm a graphic designer and super confused. 
So let's remember that half of the equation is the sign of your north node. This is American Apparel. I got it at a little vintage store called, well, it's not vintage, it's secondhand, the Closet Trading Company because American Apparel is no longer. And so my daughter and I went there today and I scored this. It was so exciting. Anyway, um, half of the equation is your north node. So the north node tells us what? I need to be a Taurus. I need to do everything Taurian. If your north node is in Libra, you need to be in partnership. You need to, your medicine to step away from all that Aries warrior me, me, me thing is to be in partnership. To be in partnership, not only with a love interest, but perhaps a business. So, um, and perhaps legal counsel ongoing or perhaps a coach or a therapist. So it's being in partnership with another and it speaks of, you know, let's say you wanted to be a graphic designer. Ideally, you'd have a partner in your business. If you don't, then it's doubly important to have a love relationship. So there's no need to be confused. So the second half, the first half is the North Node. And the second half that's coming out by the end of January is the placement of the North Node. What house it's in tells you. The North Node tells you what you need to be and the house placement tells you in what arena. So that may confuse you more, it may help you more. It's definitely going to not be confusing after you get my houses PDF. Um, so I'm excited for that. Let's see what you're saying. Hi Colton, I answered your question in the beginning about the feng shui crystals. Um, Sun sign and rising sign are the same as your south node. So it's an extra big push. It also is a dance, right? Like it's a dance between all of it. Like nothing is good and nothing is bad. So you get my video on your north node and you recognize your south node and you definitely appreciate your gifts because all of us have some tweaky south node behavior, but we also have some amazing gifts that we get to take with us. So it's not like it's all bad. The south node is all bad. Um, there's beautiful, the idea is that we be the high side to each of the signs. So my south node is in Scorpio. I get to take the high side of being Scorpio. It's a bit um, of an oracle. There's a little sexual magnetism. Those are all really good things. But if I focus on my medicine, which is Taurus, that's the really good thing. And then mine falls into the ninth house of travel um, in higher learning, which is why many of you love to watch me when I'm traveling to far away places. If your north node is in Aries and your moon is in Libra, then you would even more, more, more even naturally be very good at relationships, very good at compromising. You would have to pay even more attention to what it is that you desire, who you are. And it's going to be very telling to tell what house. So we're gonna have a live, as soon as I release the houses, it's gonna be so much fun. Um, careers for a Virgo North Node. Again, that's the what you need to be doing um, and the house placement is gonna be telling where. So for example, Virgos need to be of service to others in a physical, tangible, and practical way. Not like sitting and meditating and sending out love energy. No, you're bringing like the food to someone or serving food or you're doing the massage or you're physically helping um, in a practical and perfunctory way, like a nurse or a doctor or a healthcare practitioner or someone who does like craniosacral therapy, like my friend C, who is a Pisces North Node um, expander. So it's um, anything, do you use Western? I use Western astrology, the Western take on the nodes. Oh, wow, Pranada Yoga Living. Just ordered your North Node course about 20 minutes ago. Love it, it's very, very helpful. I think it's helpful and uplifting. That's how I feel about it, thank you. Um, so for those of you who want your North Node video, it's only $21. I made it really accessible and it's really helpful to people. It's on my website, daradubinay.com. 
My friend is doing it. Oh, vegan plant-based. What do you think of a vegan plant-based keto diet? My friend is doing it, and I'm not sure if it's that healthy. If you're eating a lot of vegetables, which she is, nuts and seeds, but no fruit, I'm going to say, you know what, try it for a while. Um, I tend to have a more all-encompassing diet of a little bit of whatever I want at the time. So like a fruit and green smoothie and then some kind of soup. And I love to have my vegan cream cheese and things. Um, but I don't eliminate sugars. And I don't know if I love the sound of keto, <laughs> to be honest. I, I'm not sure why. I don't think... Um, Carbs are evil. I don't think anything's evil and anything that gets too dogmatic is a little bit of an eyebrow archer to me. I feel like you can be clean and also flexible and eat intuitively. So, two star New York, two stars New York. Question, as we begin a new year and a new, I find myself wanting to declutter uh, but I'm really struggling. It's struggling to get rid of things. Advice? Yes. On my YouTube channel, YouTube slash Dara Dubonet, type in the search decluttering and I literally extreme sport decluttered. Like I think there's videos and inspiration there that will really help you. Um, the biggest thing I would say, and this has to do with food and items that aren't serving, is that you think, this stuff, all this stuff I'm holding on to or my new life, right? Do I want this thing or my new life? Because the new life is here in what you're welcoming when you're not holding on. If you're so busy holding on, you have no room. So you got to make room in your closets, in your drawers, in your psyche. So remember, it's not only the thing. The, all the things in our home hold psychological trips. They all, they, there's reasons we're holding on to them or there's reasons we, we got them. They don't always serve and we don't always notice, but they're speaking to us whether we notice or not. So decluttering is the act of really looking and saying, does do I love this? Is this something that I use? And if not, can somebody else be using it? And am I willing to let go and have faith that should I ever need it again, one will come back into my life because people have a lot of fear. So really, um, I would go to my YouTube videos. Ah, North, what does it mean to have the North Node in the first house that your life trajectory is to ask, who am I? And your North Node sign will tell you. And that house stuff is coming out at the end of January. So I really highly... Um, recommend. Gabriel, are you here? Oh my gosh, my nephew, my cutest, sweetest, nicest nephew. And Rafi is cute and sweet and nice. And Lohana, oh my gosh, and Ethan. Gabriel, come visit your aunt, your chia dada. Um, so worth it. What's so worth it, Jen? I think the North Nodes are so worth it. Um, you are so welcome. I love answering questions. I love being live. It's my favorite. Um, I did eight years of recorded videos, and as soon as there was a live option on Facebook, I was like, and then YouTube followed thereafter, and then there was Instagram. So I love being live. It's the freshest. Make room. The deck of character is with us. Let's pull a card. And then I'm going to... Um, a couple. I'm going to, this is the deck of character. My friend Hannah is mama of the doc. And what else can I tell you guys? I want to answer some more questions while I'm shuffling. Insights how to work synergistically surrendering, surrendering to the North Node in Scorpio. <laughs> The North Node in Scorpio could be perceived as the hardest, but I have a particular fondness and fascination with it um, because I am a Scorpio South Node. I've been very Scorpio and quite comfortable with it. Um, Midheaven in Taurus. We can talk about the Midheaven a little bit. The Midheaven is who you are on the world stage. It's not only how society sees you when you're standing on the stage labeled career. It's what you need to get out of career. So I have Gemini, and I am a communicator about a lot of different topics. Um, 
So Midheaven Taurus, calming, anything having to do with beauty. Um, your Midheaven is like your South Node. So that doesn't mean that you can't be beautiful on the world stage. Marilyn Monroe had a Taurus Midheaven. You'll always be seen as beautiful. You'll actually um, be seen as beautiful and sexy um, because Scorpio North Node is dragging you into sexual magnetism, power, inner power, not the things, not collecting the things, not the tons of makeup and not the blah, blah, blah. It's like real power. So you, more than anyone, need to let go. So I would recommend you watch my decluttering videos and maybe I'll make a new one one of these days, a fresh one. Um... I don't know if I understand this. Two made the experience that things work best if I let go a lot and let things flow. Most of the time, things work better if you let go and let things flow. Unless, of course, you do have um, a Capricorn North Node or a Virgo North Node and you've been very Pisces and you've been very Cancerian as a Capricorn North Node. Mostly, the Capricorn North Node is just asking you to leave the house, to go out into the workforce, to have your own business, to be a stand-up person who leaves a legacy. That's that. How does the Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn relate to someone? Oh, God. <laughs> the Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn, I personally have been dealing with for two years with the Saturn stuff. Um, that's a really good question. I have to get back to you on how does it relate to the Capricorn North node. Um, maybe it would make it harder. Maybe it would make it a little more explosive depending on how old you are and what else is going on in your chart. Um, fine question. Current makeup faves. I am liking the Glossier Shimmer. My daughter got me some for my birthday. Um, I like to wear mascara and um, not a lot of makeup these days. So I can't really, um, I got this bronzer at Hourglass Cosmetics, but other than that, it's pretty minimal today in general. Mm. We love your light, please help. Handling a Taurus North Node with Sun, Saturn, and Pluto all in Scorpio. Well, Sun in Scorpio, Saturn and Pluto in Scorpio. I would say let's take a look at your house placement, Miss Taurus North Node. And our medicine is doing all the beautiful things that I do. So really, there's nothing to be afraid of because as long as you're daily doing the daily doings that I describe in the videos and in the um, uh, house placement that's coming out, is that if you do the daily things, you're lifting your soul. So there's nothing to be afraid of. Ah, okay, I'm a Libra North node and living born on a Venus line. Oh, living and born on a Venus line. So that's good because Venus is the planet that rules Libra, which will pull you into your Libra North node. But if you have a Neptune line very close, Venus and Neptune go together because Neptune is like the highest octave of love and Venus is love and beauty. So they're not terrible together, but if any way that you are feeling like you're not being seen or you're underwater, you can't see yourself clearly or a partner clearly, then um, I would say that it would be a good idea to do very Virgo things, very earthy things, to ground yourself on the earth, walks in nature, um, make a plan, make some alarms on your phone, like set reminders, be, um, I would lean into Venusian things and lean into Libra things and certainly partnership will help you. Um, 
So it's really all like, this is like a language, there's pieces to it and you get to like navigate it however you want. So you can enjoy the fantasy land of Neptune and when it's time to be seen, then you will find a sunline in your astrogeography and douse yourself with that either by visiting a sunline or um, visiting a Mercury line. Sounds like you need some Mercury and not so much Neptune. And we do that with astrogeography. The beautiful thing in this day and age is that we don't need to move somewhere. We don't necessarily even have to visit a line in order to reap the benefits. So for example, um, let me see, how can I give you an example that's on my table? Um, I have a Jupiter Midheaven line and I got some of these markers in Lisbon. So these are reminding me of my Jupiter Midheaven line. So if you find that you have a sun line, let's say in South Africa or Morocco, then having something Moroccan on your desk, looking at some landscapes and some pictures of places that hold the energy that you want does the trick. We have so many questions. Um, That's a good question about cusps. I think we're gonna talk about cusps the next time I go live with the houses video because this is just kind of north node since not everybody knows their house placement. There's gonna be a free video on my website telling you how to find out which house placement your north node is in and then we're gonna discuss probably at the end of the month. Um, if you're, that's funny. Okay, good question. What about living on a sun line for a Pisces north node? Um, living on a Neptune probably feels good. Living on a sunline will be like creative. It will pull you out into being seen. Um, that doesn't seem harmful at all. Like your south node energy would be mercury. Like if you feel too mercurial and you're getting nitpicky, then you don't want to be on a mercury line. But a sunline is kind of good for everyone, unless of course they don't want to be seen. You know what, Jen? Um, I am, as far as I know, the first person who has connected astro, astro geography and the North Nodes in the way that I have. And so what I did in the North Node videos, I touched upon the lines that you would want to have um, for your particular North Node. For example, uh, North Node in Scorpio might want a very long dose of Pluto energy, whereas somebody else would not. Like somebody with their Scorpio South Node needs to not be near a Pluto line. Um, I don't have plans to make a body of work, but it is in the North Node videos. So I think you got yours. Good career paths for North Node Scorpio. Um, Again, we're going to have to take a look at the house placement, but deep dives, anybody who takes deep dives into things, you are forensic, you are detectives, you are the ones who um, can take a deep dive into another psyche to help them, psychiatrists, therapists, um, coaches, counselors, seers, intuitives, um, Mm, ayahuasca leaders, anybody who helps someone else in any kind of transformation. Jen, I don't know. I mean, I probably should come up with a program that combines it. Um, I got your North Node course and being a Pisces North Node really net resonates, but I work in the finance tech industry and my Virgo, not sure what her Virgo does, but I imagine that when you have a Pisces North Node and your job entails, and, it, and the older you get or the more turns around the sun you make is your North Node starts calling and it really looks very different from what we were for the first 30 years of our life. like. You know, I had a session with a woman who had this Virgo South Node, Pisces North Node, and she was an attorney and she did very Virgo-like things, but she started to notice that she was less and less interested in the particulars 
and more interested in the feeling and the story around what she was doing. So she, it was kind of startling to her because she always thought of herself as a very Virgo person. So it's important to take some time alone as a Pisces North node to get the messages from your own heart and from spirit that won't come if you're so busy, busy, busy trying to make everything perfect and go according to plan because the answers come when you're floating on your back in the water surrendering. Ah, you guys, purple. Purple patchouli, what a cute name. Um, Pisces second house career. That's going to be in my house PDF. It's going to be interesting because it took me <laughs> a lot of time and there's a lovely editing it right now. Um, so we're not really talking about the houses, but we're going to open it up for house talk soon, really soon, as soon as it's out. Hmm. Libra North no careers or anything having to do with partnership, getting along, compassionate communication, um, sharing, because your path is to learn how to be in partnership and consider others. So you might help others in some way with partnership um, in, in your findings of your discovery of how to be in partnership because it doesn't come natural and eventually, whatever doesn't come naturally, and if we're following our North Node, becomes our area of expertise. It's something, it's a gift that lies almost dormant inside of us when we're younger, and we feel little flashes of it, like it comes to life and then it goes away. And by the time we're 30, the North Node's like knocking. Oh, you're so welcome. Any good ways for Libra North Node to find love? Walk out the door, honey. <laughs> Just be emotionally and physically available. And the best advice when you go on a date is to listen. To really listen to somebody else's wants and needs and desires and put them before your own. Hi, Kate. I, hi, Dara. I looked at everyone's North Node in my family. I love that. That makes me very happy. My husband and I are Virgo North Node. Okay. And my youngest son is Pisces. Okay. So your youngest son is headed where you've been before. What comes naturally to you? So that's lovely. My oldest daughter is Libra and my oldest son is Aries. Well, here's the beauty is that you can recognize um, and encourage their North Node behavior. And it doesn't have to be the same of yours. It doesn't cause conflict and rivalry. rivalry. The only way it does if like, somebody has an opposite north node than you is if you don't understand their direction and you don't encourage them it's almost like the unknown is what makes us trip up like i always say that it's like th when things go undiscovered or unlooked at or unexamined they end up being like a little pile that goes under the carpet and then eventually the pile gets so big then somebody trips and falls down and it's irreversible so to understand the soul's wish of the people who are near you is like it's heaven because i can encourage my daughter to be her leo north node self if i didn't know that was her north node then i might not say glam it up or show yourself or like because i know it it helps me to help her and because I know her house placement, I can help her even more. So I highly recommend, we all don't live in a bubble. There's usually one person in our lives, if not parents and siblings and coworkers and people we help or people we love or friends. So knowing, this is why I priced the North Node bundle life tool so low because I want everybody not only to know the soul's wish of people around them, but to also um, be able to learn from all of the nodes because there's some juicy things in Scorpio North Node and there's some things that like we learn or we listen to and we're like I actually could use a little more of that it won't be as hard for us it's not as much of a reach and a stretch like if I want to add a little Libra North Node it's not going to be so hard of a stretch as if I had the Aries South Node so it's nice for all of us to know all of them in my opinion my mom has the opposite. I'm a Capricorn North Node and she's a Cancer North Node. We used to have huge conflicts. It's getting better now. Wonder how I can support and myself 
even though that we are headed opposite ways. So that's perfect. That is a perfect example. So if you're Capricorn North Node, it's kind of cool. You have to get out of the house. You have been very Cancerian in all of your past lifetimes. You've been home mama. You've been the matriarch. You've been intuitive. You've been really in touch with your feelings and nurturing others. So your force or your push is to step out into the world as a business person and your mom has been where you need to go so you can take tips and clues and things that she has inherently in her so both of you can guide each other i recommend both of you watch your perspective um north nodes and see how they feel how you feel so you can both encourage each other and let me know because i'm curious So I think we're good. I think we did a nice long video. Um, and obviously there's always more questions. My North Node is in Gemini, also my rising. And I have a lot of Gemini people in my life. That's wonderful, including my dad and my husband. Is it somehow related? Yes, the best thing your soul can do is have people of the sign, the sun sign or moon sign of your North Node because you're like, getting that energy you're learning from them um how to be so it's perfect actually hey Leighton Colton sent me messages so I answered a couple in the beginning and um I think we're good for now I am setting out to do some drawing and I have a whole new thing that I am doing my little doobies <laughs> um I think the bundle is great to have. Um, your north node is in Pisces and you are at the end of the wheel where you have been all of the signs. It's like the most evolved and you have a deep understanding of the way things work and you have your trajectory is to be a healer really um, healing through energy, healing through meditation, through art projects, through art, through creativity, through music, and you have the ability to help others. So having that is so amazing. I'm drawing. I'm, oh yeah, I was going to pull a card for us. Hannah just reminded me. So yeah, I can't stop drawing. In fact, the only time I'll stop drawing is when I want to do something like do a session for someone or to do a podcast or make a live video. But besides that, nothing is interesting to me. Oh, that and hanging out with my daughter. But I have been drawing obsessed. So the deck of character is something I use daily. Um, it's a deck of cards by my friend Hannah, and it is an oracle deck, and it's the freshest because I like fresh and current energy. I don't like old, heavy, dogmatic. Bleh. I like, like, fresh. And when I saw this deck, my friend Nancy gave it to me, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to meet her. It's like a sister in spirit. So I put them all together. I used to have them separated, tools, places, characters. So let's hear what Hannah says if she's still with us. We're picking, what do we need to know? After this fine live video, what do we all need to know? This is a very pivotal time with this eclipse energy and full moon energy. So we're going to pick. Da -da. Claw. We got claw as a tool. Oh my God. We got the love goddess. Oh, I just love it. So, so far we have claw, love goddess. So we have a tool, a character, and we're gonna get a place. <laughs> Hold on, I wanna mix them up. The love goddess is just the best. Ah, 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 ah. So Hannah can tell us what I think. Well, getting to the gold mine, this is my very first pick, is like you do all this, you claw your way out, you gotta like get animal. To me, it's like, like being animalistic is paying attention to your instincts, like your animal instincts. Like they're, they go so far beyond the brain. Since I am splenic, I'm a splenic projector in human design, like I notice just the way I operate is just, it's like an animal instinct. So for me, this is my instincts. 
And this is being the love goddess that I am. And when you follow your intuition, you get to be a love goddess and then you get receive, you receive abundance. Um, so we can hear what, I love Hannah's interpretations. Like I get mine and then she always introduces something amazing. Thank you for saying I'm amazing. That's so sweet. You said, oh my God, out loud to the love goddess card. <laughs> it's the love goddess. We get to be her. She's just so amazing. Oh, I have to go check my mailbox, Hannah. I haven't checked it yet. Um, so many hearts, you guys. So the claw, and this one I would like some clarification on because I, I really do get the love goddess. She is love, and I do get gold mine. Like, I picked gold. I am, my word is gold. I'm the gold coins. So, um, and certainly love goddess. All of us have the love goddess in us. You agree with mine? Embody your divine feminine power it's your route to abundance. See, I love her wording. It's so beautiful. Hannah gives readings, just so you know. So, um, yeah, this is the animal. This is the instinct. This is the intuition. This is like knowing what's up before your head figures it out. It's not about your head. It's about the... And it's feminine, and it's like feline, and get to be the love goddess and get all kinds of abundance that is coming this year. I don't, I just feel it. I have felt a sense of great anticipation of beautiful grand gestures from the universe. And that's that. Okay, I love you guys. Ooh, love claw is boundaries. Claw is boundaries, like you're like, stay away, my claw is coming out. Um, reclaiming our power back. There's so many things I'm sure for the claw that I'm not saying. So if you get your deck, Hannah has beautiful words on each of the things. Um, I highly recommend you order this. We're lucky to be able to have this deck. That's how I feel. You two what, Jen? Yeah, claw is boundaries. I do love that. The claw is boundaries and like protection like almost like protecting your your cub it's like you're protecting yourself and you uh, or you could protect your cub or what's dear to you you know the drawings the doobies my connection with you guys like I'm really um into authenticity and truth and not agenda it's like animals like truth it just is what it is there's no posing and there's no um posturing and being pompous no it's just like the real deal and i love animals for that fierce i like that drawing the line fierce like being true like true to what's important to you that's what i said shroom sucker i love that name shroom sucker uh protecting your cubs so i feel so good about this year too like i just feel so good so i'm sharing my positivity even though there's like weird things that i still have to tie up from last year the city my house like crappy stuff but none of it feels crappy like that's the weirdest thing i'm walking around like yeah everything's good so I'm totally grateful every day. Hi, Dara from Kelowna. Do you say Kelowna? There's so many people that happen to come up. Oh, I saw you had a comment. How did I get into astrogeography? I remember your question. Um, and then I'll go after this, even though this is so much fun. Um, I have to prepare for tomorrow. I have two sessions. I remember EK, you had... I'm going to have to answer the rest of these tomorrow, uh, if they're still available tomorrow. Um, there's so many questions. Huh. EK. I don't know why I don't see your... Yes, it is. EK Walls and Kalana. How did you get into astrogeography? When did you realize you were an intuitive? So... It's really very interesting. Um, I knew about astrogeography years ago. Um, an astrologer friend of mine, when I told her I visited California from Florida and I was like, I feel like a different person in California. Like I feel pretty and happy and creative. Why is that? 
like, what's going on? Like, I remember just saying it to her, not really asking her, because I had no idea about astrogeography, but she said, oh, you have a Jupiter line there. And I was like, really? She's like, yep, you're living on a Neptune line in Florida, and California is going to feel so much better. Good night, Jen. So I knew I was living on my Jupiter line, and I never really knew how to do the astrogeography, but a couple of summers ago, I was like, why am I miserable? Like things were going really hard. Of course, Saturn was transiting my fourth house and I had problems with the city and my house. And it was just like a nightmare. And I was like, what's going on? This is my happy place. If I'm not happy in my happy place, maybe there's a transit astrogeographically. So I started to learn the cyclo cartography, astrogeography, and it's the transits. And I was like, I got to get the basics first because I want to be able to look up and know what I'm doing at any point, anytime I want to travel. And as soon as I want to know something, I realized that I had to help people in the sessions, but also teach them how to do it. Because it's like the first thing, if you're having a hard time in your life, it just could be the astrogeography. You just need to move, a geographical fix. So, oh, it's buffering. Oh, well, maybe it's time to go. It was a long video. Um, I got into astrogeography because I was having a hard time on my happy line. And then I had to like figure it out. I'm like, what's going on? So all is well. Um, I offer my intuitive services. I, I guide people. Um, I'm happy helping people figure out what to do and where to be. And if you can't move, Amanda Love, here's the good thing. And the really cool thing is that if you can't move or don't want to move, you can visit a place. If you can't or don't want to visit another place, which often happens because there might be a really stellar line in a war-torn place that you're not going to go visit, you can look at images from that place. If you have Sun Midheaven, which is your fame and reputation line in the whole world, but it's in a place you are not going to go to, then you get to watch movies from that area. Look at pictures of landscapes and people, perhaps fabric or textiles or some imagery in front of you to conjure up the energies that exist for you in another place. Like I did when I wanted to move to California. I had a map of California on my wall. Um, so you can have images hanging in your, yeah, the North Node houses is like insane. So uh, I love you guys. Oh, Lindsay, love to you too. Love to all of us. Let's chat tomorrow. Let's chat tomorrow because I have more questions to answer. Big hugs, everybody. Totally late in New York City and getting to be drawing time. Big hugs. See you soon. Thank you for the hearts. I love that. You know I love that. <laughs>